You may find the title of this nugget, What is Done, a little odd or a little perplexing. What do I mean, what is done? Definition of done is another term that's often used. I like what is done. It's a nice lightweight term, very consistent with our lightweight approach for Scrum. It is not acceptance criteria. It is acceptance criteria, but it is also not acceptance criteria. It's probably the best way to describe it, and I realize that's not a very good definition. Acceptance criteria is what we typically think of in a large traditional waterfall project where we present large monolithic documents after the end of a phase. So every two to three months, we present a, a document or a series of documents, and we present a very formal, elaborate acceptance process often connected with a formal document that we request signature on. What is done is not that formal process. What is done is a simple acknowledgement. It's okay. Therefore, again, yes, it's the same as acceptance criteria, we're getting that acknowledgement that it's okay. We're doing it in a much more lightweight fashion. Often what is done is a verbal. Yes, that's fine. Thank you very much, Steve. You've done a good job. Therefore, again, I want to distinguish it from acceptance criteria, but to try to get your mind around it, what is done is acceptance criteria, but much lighter weight. I've created a nugget exclusive for what is done because although it is lightweight, we are going to be asking for that okay many, many, many times in our Scrum project. Every story, as we've discussed in the definition of a story itself, is going to have an okay point. Yes, developer, if you satisfy these criteria that I've defined in advance, your story will be done. Each sprint is going to have an okay point. At the end of the sprint, we have completed all of the stories. We've done our review. We've done our sprint review. We've done our sprint retrospective. Yes, it's okay. The sprint is done. Let's start our sprint planning for the next sprint. At the end of a release, we will be getting a more formal definition of what is done. And at that point in time, I would actually suggest that we may want to bring in this concept of a more formal acceptance criteria and saying it's a little more than an okay because we're now turning code over from our project, moving it to the production system and beginning to run it in real life for business functionality. So maybe then we truly want a full acceptance criteria and a more formal process and at the end of everything, when we've satisfied everything with the project vision, we probably want, again, an OK. That, yes, it's OK to disband the team. You have satisfied all of the expectations that I, the business owner, had. So the product vision has been completed. That's OK. So again, fairly substantial differentiation between what is a formal acceptance criteria and Steve's definition of what is done. And it's more than just getting it three because each story we're going to have, again, the model we were using, 12 stories per sprint. So we're going to get 12 OKs in each sprint. Each sprint is two weeks long. If our total project engagement is going to be six months, we're going to have 12 more Sprint OKs, we're going to have probably four releases, and I'm just picking a number out of the air, three to four uh, sprints per release. So four releases, it's probably acceptable to go for the more formal acceptance criteria at that point in time, and a single OK at the end of the product. So we need to have a well-defined but lightweight process for getting the OK, the what is done, 12 times in each sprint, 12 sprints in a engagement, and so on and so on. So how do we get this definition of done 
premeditated upfront in advance. Before we can even start talking about what the criteria for done is, we need to have a quick discussion on what done really means. What is done? Is done the fact that the coding is done? Probably not. Is done the fact that it's tested? I would say yes. But what does tested mean? Is it zero defects? 100%? Or is it some lesser state when we run out of time? is done when all of the documentation and all of the other steps associated with getting the story complete complete I would again suggest yes or is done really not happening until we get the product owner to review and accept each story and as in spite of the, what that sounds like is the ideal state I would actually suggest that's no we have the definition of done defined on the story card. If the team believes they have satisfied the story card definition of done, I believe the team is allowed to say the story itself is done. We will get final product owner validation during our sprint review. But our product owner's time is scarce and precious. We do not need to bring the product owner in for every story in the middle of a sprint. So again, the team needs to work through and understand exactly what done is, and then we can begin to develop our criteria for done. The first step to getting to an efficient what is done is we need to have a universal what is done. What do I mean by universal what is done? A series of activities that we will expect every single story to go through. So maybe your expectation is every single story, the two hour design is going to go through a five minute peer review. The designer is going to sit with another scrum team member and say, is my design appropriate? Every two hours of coding is going to go through a five minute peer review. Have I followed the coding standards? The test cases themselves probably need another five minute peer review. Yes, those test cases look appropriate. Yes, I believe if you satisfy all of those test cases, you probably will in fact achieve the expectations of done as defined for your story. Proactively, I believe we need a statement of what unit test case coverage is. So we have test cases. We have an expectation that 85%, 90% of all test cases completed and passed. This is the age old story of how much testing is enough. And without getting into a more traditional dialogue on testing, there is often never enough time to do 100% of the testing that we want to do on a piece of code, recognizing that most of our code is not mission critical, life threatening um, pieces of software. There is an expectation that we can compromise on some of our testing, focusing on the core areas, ensuring the core functionality is 100% accurate. And there is an expectation or a, an a, a realization that when we run out of time, it may be more efficient to say, yes, I will accept the fact that your story is done if only 90% of all the test cases are completed and passed, provided that the core test cases are 100% passed. And there is probably an expectation that the code has been checked into the code repository and a successful full build has completed that the result of your code check-in does not break anything else. So we have a series of, I've laid out five, universal what is done criteria that we expect every story to have evidence that it passed. There's a little tick box, there's a little something somewhere. Maybe we have a, a, a little set of four or five tick boxes on the back of every story card. And when the design is done, 
we do a tick box. And when the code review is done, we simply start to do the tick boxes so that again, when we present the story card to the product owner for review, we can show evidence that all of the universal what is done statements have happened. It's to accelerate the process because we're gonna do this so many times and we wanna make it lightweight. These should be five minute tasks for most stories, not two hour tasks. Because if we start to put two hour what is done criteria into our sprints, we're not gonna get our sprint done in two weeks. So with the universal, every story must satisfy the universal definitions of what is done. Let's focus on specific definitions of what is done at a story level. So implied, every story must satisfy the universal components. So we're not going to restate that. We're not going to put a line on what is done on every story card that says universal components must be satisfied because that's a given. They must be satisfied. Key to what is done at a story is the business level validation. How do we validate the business. I.e., what do we test? So we have the story that says, I, specific type of owner, needs to do a function so that I can satisfy a result. What do we test is largely driven by what is the result. but we begin to develop our test cases based on what is the result. What are the errors to be produced? The validation that we have a green checkbox that says stock available, but we begin to define what the specific story validation is. It starts written in the business functionality. I will validate, I will, I will certify, I will okay this story when you have proven to me that. I will get a, a green tick box when there's product available and I will get a big red X when there is no product available. So there will always be story specific validation and that's what's going to be written on the story card. The team I would say the team may automate or may, may automate, may add to the definition of done if the team believes there are specific automated tests that need to be built into the test server slash build server. Ideally, every new story that's created should result in new automated tests being added to the test pack, i.e. some subset of our test cases. I would suggest a definition of done is some validation that the appropriate tests have been extracted from the overall test suite for the story and built into our automated test processes. And a final consideration that we know there's going to be non-coding stories. There will be stories that these universal components don't apply to. There will be stories for documentation. There will be stories for sending team on Java training. There will be stories for putting in a new build server. So we will need specific what is done for these non-coding stories. And the only way to deal with these really is a, a one-off whatever the specifics of the non-coding story is, we will need a unique definition of what is done. Without sounding like a broken record, the key to what is done is it's proactive, it's known in advance, and as we are working on the stories, we focus on satisfying the what is done the minimal requirements to satisfy the what is done. We will do everything required to satisfy the what is done 
and the minimal amount of work required to satisfy what's, what is done. And again, that's being Scrum. So the next step in what is done is at the sprint level. And the sprint level, what is done, should be very straightforward because we have ensured every story. is done. And by ensuring that every story is done, our sprint what is done, I'm going to say should be automatic. There should be no surprises when we bring the product owner in and do the product owner review, which is really part of our sprint review. I've, I've called it out specifically here as part of what is done recognizing it as part of the sprint review because really the product owner review is our what is done. And we probably need to set some norms for the product owner review and the norm is you can't make it up on the fly. You defined what is done for each story, provided you don't disagree that we have satisfied the done for each story, then the sprint is done. And it really should be as straightforward and simple as that. The key, in my humble opinion, is to ensuring we get what is done for the sprint is ensuring that we enforce with the product owner that there is no additional definition of done at the sprint. Each story is done, therefore the only criteria at the sprint level is the review of the stories, the show and tell with the, the product owner that says story number one, here's the show and tell, it's done. Agreed? Yes. Story number two, here's the show and tell, here's the accept acceptance criteria. Here's the definition of done for story number two. Agreed and on and on and on. So if we ensure that every story is done, our sprint what is done should be automatic. The other criteria for getting what is done at the sprint is that we are doing the scrum rituals. A scrum should not be declared done or a sprint should not be declared done unless we have completed the appropriate sprint review. There are no shortcuts. There is no, well, you know, we're confident that each sprint is done. Let's skip the two hours. Let's move on. There are very valid reasons, as we discussed in the, the rituals for Scrum, why we need to do a sprint review. We need to do a sprint review and the sprint is not going to be done until we do it. And maybe just me, but my expectation and my, my experience is there is often considerable pressure on the team to, script, to skip the sprint retrospective. Come on, it's only two weeks. Yeah, there's some lessons learned, but let's just hold on to them and try them the next time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The sprint is not done until the scrum rituals take place. And again, we need to define that in advance, say we're not going to move on, we're going to hold true to our scrum principles, and we're not going to allow you to start the next sprint planning session until our review and our retrospective is done. And we have your okay that these stories are done. There's not going to be any second guessing these as we move into a release or as we move into as we move forward. They are done. And after multiple sprints are done, we'll move into a release. What is done. And although not critical to being Scrum, my suggestion is at the release level, we do want to implement some degree of formal acceptance a informal or more okay at the release level can also work, especially if this project is or if the scrum work is being done exclusive within your own organization. You may relax some of the formality of the acceptance criteria at the release level, 
But at least my experience is there should be some degree of formality, some degree of more traditional ritual at the release level, simply because, as I stated, we are moving new code into production. So there needs to be more organizational units involved. The operations department will now get involved because they're going to begin to run this new code. The maintenance and support group may get involved because they may begin to support this new code and so on and so on and so on. So again, my expectation is we would have a more formal acceptance criteria where we will present formal evidence that it is production ready and we will expect some degree of formal sign-off. My humble experience only. Depending on how you develop your stories, if you do not have specific stories for the creation of an implementation plan, specific stories for the delivery of the appropriate business training, and specific stories for the development of the support plan, we absolutely need to ensure that those are covered off as part of, again, done, as part of our acceptance criteria. So if you have specific stories that address every aspect of the implementation plan, and you have specific stories that have a definition of done that says, I have delivered training to the finance department, acceptance criteria or definition of done is training delivered, finance department functional, you have another story that says deliver training to the marketing department and your definition of what is done is training has been delivered, marketing department validates that they are functional in the code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You do not have to have the same degree of formality associated with the presentation of and acceptance of the implementation plans, the training and the support plan. But again, maybe I'm 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 restating the obvious because this is a release because we're moving new code into production we need to ensure that all of these more traditional activities that would happen on any IT project are definitely included in our scrum project because without them the other organizational units aren't ready to accept this new code into our production environment and our final definition of done is at the product and this is, at least again, in my humble opinion, a very simple what is done. A simple okay is fine. Dear business owner, six, eight, ten months ago you developed a product vision. We have now been through six to eight weeks or months of scrum delivery. We've had four implementations or four releases. At the completion of this final release, have we satisfied your product vision? Is everything that you expected or modified as a result of our Scrum refinement complete? Yes, thank you very much. Here's your OK. Release the team for new work to start on a new product vision. and our Scrum work is complete for this particular product vision. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, getting the what is done at the product vision level. This nugget focused on what I think is an often overlooked aspect to Scrum, and that is the definition of what is done. How do we know that the work on the story is done and we can move on? Recognizing that a story is short, one to two days on average should be about the amount of time we would want to spend on a story. Therefore, we're going to do many, many, many story completions over the life of our Scrum, scrum engagement. Therefore, it's again critical that we have an effective system for determining and validating the what is done that we get the okay. We developed very specific universal criteria, peer reviews, done.
um, test plans, test cases, done. Testing, done. Or at least at a percent level that's within the tolerance levels for the organization. Documentation, done. Business specific criteria, done. Uh, build automation, build and test automation, done, so on. So we have proactively defined all of these criteria that we need to ensure are in place so that we can define what is done at the story and we have defined criteria that's very fast five minutes peer review is done do a tick box on the back of the story card test case review is done do a tick box on the back of the story card present the story card with all the tick boxes to the product owner as part of the sprint review and done is done we talked about what is done at the sprint level and really the key focus of what is done at the sprint level is presenting that story card with all the tick box on it to the business owner and a quick show and tell that says and here is your visual proof that all of this is done because here's the working code and here is the validation that the inventory is available to satisfy the customer's order we need to ensure at the sprint level that the product owner isn't introducing new undefined definition of what is done that we're holding the product owner to the agreed upon what is done at the story level at the release level I suggest we need to bring in a more formal acceptance process simply because we're moving code to production And therefore, there needs to be a more formal process for that. And I would suggest at the release level, it's going to follow very much traditional software processes for your organization. And really, at the release level is the only place that I believe what is done is formal. And in the rest of the cases, it's a, a quick OK. It's a quick checkbox, and that even applies at the most grand level of our Scrum engagement. At the product level, did we satisfy the vision? Business owner is going to say, yep, it looks good. Here's your OK. Here's your tick box. Go ahead and complete. Release your team. Declare this Scrum work a total success. This concludes our nugget on what is done. I hope this module has been informative for you. And thank you very much for viewing.